So as we crack on with the address position, I'll be running you through like a mini version of step one, which is the swing direction, and step two, which is the club face alignment, just to make sure these two are gelled together. Now in later videos, I'll show you how to build up from here. And just remember, if you don't want to miss out, give that subscribe. And just remember, if you don't want to miss out, just hit that subscribe button below and give me a big thumbs up. Now as you address the ball, I want you to put your feet together. Now there are two reasons for this. The first one is we don't need the body right now. And the best way to simplify the golf swing and to quiet the body down is to put the feet together. Now the second reason is if you were to stand with your feet wider apart like this, okay, there's a good chance you're gonna throw your hips in, you're gonna throw your hands in, and you're gonna dance around just to get the ball out there. But at this stage, actually, the only person you're cheating is yourself. So putting your feet together really is a good thing because it quietens the body movements down isolates your swing fault or your tendency if you're hitting it left hitting it right you'll see it straight away also putting your feet together will allow you to get the feeling for the correct swing direction so no cheating get those feet together allow the ball to be the best teacher and show you which way you're going and very shortly everything will be as clear as a whistle and i know you're probably thinking oh god put my feet together what kind of golf swing is that going to be obviously i can't turn i can't move but i tell you what you'll be surprised at how far you hit it if the swing direction is correct, of course. So the ball position, even with your feet together, should be just left of center. Right now, so let's crack on with the swing. Now, as I address the ball with my feet together like this, okay, the ball position is just left of center. Now, the tee in the ground, this is the guide for the first part of the backswing. Now, if I miss the tee on the inside, then it's gonna cause problems with the swing later on. If I miss it on the outside here, then I'm gonna hit that basket. So that basket is controlling me. So just try nice and relaxed to swing over that tee here. And that'll control the very first part of the backswing just to ensure you're, you're on the correct line. So the halfway stage of your backswing is really important. And something which most golfers are not aware of is you wanna be swinging it back into your center of gravity point, which is set at address. Now, if you're not sure how to set up correctly at address, then check out my lesson on posture. It's vital at this stage. Now, as you address the ball with your feet together and you're bending the knees and lean forward at the same time from your shoulders, you'll feel the body weight move onto the balls of your feet. You're now dynamic and ready to spring into action. So now, as you get to the halfway stage in the backswing, you wanna be swinging into your center of gravity point, which runs from the base of your neck through the balls of your feet. And you'll see here, as I swing the club back, like this here, the club head is actually on the line from the base of my neck through the balls of my feet. Now, if I miss the center of gravity point and swing too much on the inside here, then it'll rock me back onto my heels. If I miss it too much on the outside like this here, then it'll push me across and force me onto my toes. And all of these things, they run into the golf swing. So as you can see, if I missed this point too much on the inside or too much on the outside, then it's gonna cause problems with my balance. It's gonna cause problems with, with the way my body turns and moves. Okay, and it's actually gonna run into my swing and cause swing directional problems. Now your center of gravity point is no different when you're playing other sports. So you imagine you're playing football, you're waiting for the ball, you're ready, you're in a ready position here, you're standing on your optimal center of gravity point on the balls of your feet, and you're not leaning forward with your neck or leaning backwards with your neck. So you're playing tennis, you're waiting with the racket, you're there, you're ready. Also as well, if you're gonna, someone throws a ball to you, what do you do? You're ready. Skiing. Now, if I bend too much on my knees, I'm gonna go back that way. If I uh, uh, lean too far over, then I'm gonna go this way. So this balancing point stays the same right the way through. Now on the driving range, as a control, you can use an alignment stick. You just set the stick, bang on your center of gravity line. Okay, put your feet together. All I want you to do now is then swing back onto the stick. Just swing back onto the line of the stick. Just get the feeling for it. You can look a few times just to get the feeling. And then try and do it without, without looking. Just get a feeling for it. Do it from instinct. Now you could use a mirror or a video camera, but don't start killing yourself over a few degrees here or a few degrees there. It doesn't make that much of a difference. You should feel it and do it from instinct. Get a feeling for your own swing. 
Now at this stage the club face should be turned slightly inwards as you swing backwards here. Okay, slightly inwards, so now I know that's square. This is open, this is closed. Okay, so the halfway point you want to see the club face, the toe pointing slightly inwards like this here, so I know the club face now is in a square position. And don't forget to relax and allow your body to freely move and turn. Okay, you're not a wooden man or a machine, you're an animal. So obviously this is the gold standard position where the, the club head covers the hands at the halfway position here. But, and there's always a big but, on the flip side your backswing has got to be functional, especially when you relate it back to the, to the impact position. So if you rocked up for a lesson and did a Jordan Spieth on me, so you had a weak grip, then you arched your wrist at the top of the backswing, which closes the club face, okay, which just balances the whole situation out, and then at impact, you're consistently square. So then I'd say, fine, don't fix something which isn't broken. But if we were to step it up a gear to even bigger matchups, I mean, just Google Bobby Jones. I mean, Jack Nicholas said he was the greatest player of all time. Now, if you take a look at Bobby Jones' swing, you'll see he gets way on the inside in the backswing, cups his wrist, gets it across the line, club face is wide open. And in the modern day era of golf, if Bobby Jones went for a golf lesson, whoa, it'd be all wrong. Now to offset this, he'd just strengthen his grip. Like this, he'd have fantastic leg work through impact. You know, and he used to play with these old wooden stick things and he used to nail it. Now, if you look at the likes of John Ram, or Dustin Johnson, yeah. And he thinks it's funny. <laughs> so on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, in the modern era of golf, we've got the likes of John Rahm or Dustin Johnson. And what they do is, they do the opposite to Bobby Jones. Instead of going long and getting it cupped and open, what they do is they arch their wrist so the backswing is slightly shorter and the club face is closed. So once again, if Dustin Johnson was a kid and he went for a golf lesson, he'd say, Whoa! Listen lad, your, uh, your club face is closed at the top, you'll never get the ball into the air. But they offset the closed club face at the top with a very open and athletic position through impact. Now it's all about what's functional for you, especially through impact. You know, there's pros and cons with set positions, but what's really important is how your address position, your wrist angles and your dynamic movements affect your consistency through impact. And it's all starting to sound very technical. You know, and you've got to be careful. As soon as you start diving into your launch angles, your spin numbers, and your face-to-path angles, and you start overthinking, over-analysis is a real killer. Now, your wrist angles control the club face, and the swing direction controls your rotation and angle of attack and delivery through impact. Now, you've probably heard that kind of language before, and this is when everything starts to get a little bit woohoo. You know, it doesn't have to be that complicated. I mean, don't get me wrong here, everything does have to match up. But it's a personal and individual thing. You know, it should come from feeling and instinct, not just numbers alone. Now you want to feel a certain feel and you want to see a certain ball flight. And it's got to suit your eye. Now when somebody comes along for a golf lesson, it's really, it's my job to ensure that they find their own swing and they find their own ball flight that suits their eye from feeling, from instinct. You know, it should be a natural process. Now, if you're a little bit unsure about your grip and your wrist hinge and how they should match up, then go and check out my lesson on grip and wrist hinge. Now, if you swing back into your center of gravity point, which runs from the base of your neck through the balls of your feet, then it will match up, which I find an excellent way to improve many of my pupils. Now, as we move into the downswing, your downswing direction is everything, okay? So, what happens is, the backswing moves the club head around behind, back behind your body. Now, to get the club head back to the ball, you don't want to be doing this and you don't want to be doing this. What happens is, the club head works its way from inside over to the right side, so get back onto the ball to target line. Now, from here, then it swings through and pulls your body up and through the shot. Now, I don't want you to be thinking, you know, pump it 
pump it or try and shallow this angle here or slide and rotate your hips. These things happen naturally. Now this all sounds like clever stuff, but it's no different than if I was to throw a ball like this, the ball hand goes back behind around my body. Now from here, I don't want to go like this and I certainly don't want to do this kind of thing. So from this position behind my body here, the ball hand heads towards the right side. And when it does, when it, when it starts off on the right side, my body catches it up, pulls it back on the ball to target line like this. Now the backbone of the golf swing is the swing direction because if it's not correct in relation to the target, then your body will be blocked. So now with your feet together from the halfway backswing position here, you want to be following this clue on the ground here, which is pointing over to the right side. So now you're coming from the inside to out like this here. Okay. I didn't mean to hit the ball then, but it's pretty good top shot. Now, if I was to swing left, like this here, then I'd take this basket out. I could even take the other one out if I do it extremely. So when the swing is coming from outside, that's when you start to get your slices, your pull hooks, your top balls, your skiers with your driver, all kinds of things go on, okay? So this golf club here, which is pointing over to the right side, is actually controlling your downswing direction. Oh man, don't you just hate it when the light starts going? It's coming into winter now. Do you know, I started early this morning, Went to do a bit of work and then came back this afternoon. I've only had an hour at it. Right, it took me half an hour to set everything up. So anyway, back on with this. Let's see if we can make it. And these phone lights are brilliant. So morning, as you can see, we didn't make it. I had a blackout. So here we go again. Now it's a little bit foggy. It'll lift, it'll lift. <laughs> so the aim of the game at step one is to hit the ball straight to the right, 20 or 30 meters or 20 or 30 yards, whatever your measurement is. So if you think about tennis, now if I stand within the controls like this here, now my racket is on the ball to target line. So from here, I draw the racket back, back around my body here with the rotation. So from this point here now, the racket has got to head back towards the right side, back towards the ball, back towards the, the ball to target line here. Now as the racket comes towards the ball and the ball to target line, my body rotation kicks in and pulls the racket back on the ball to target line and the momentum carries the racket through. Now it's the same thing as throwing a ball. Now I stand in within the controls. I'm standing parallel to the ball to target line. My ball hand now is on the target line. So I draw my ball hand back around behind my body with the rotation. Now from here, I'm not gonna to wanna to do this or this. The ball hand needs to get back to the ball to target line. Okay, back to the target. So it initially it heads to the right side like this. Then what happens is the body rotation catches this movement up and pulls the ball hand back towards the direction of the target and the momentum carries my body through. I mean, it's the same as throwing a punch in karate. I mean, you can relate it to so many different movements. Now, another reason to hit the ball straight to the right is that most amateur golfers swing to the left of the target, which is from outside to in. So the club face cuts away across the ball, which requires excellent timing. And that's the reason you can play one, two, three, four holes quite well, and then the wheels fall off and you lose about five or six holes around because it's really, really difficult to time the shot when the club face is cutting across the ball. And also when you swing to the left from outside to in, you're swinging across your body, you're losing massive amounts of club head speed, massive amounts of power, and you're blocking your body. You're actually standing in your own way. And you're gonna spray it all over the park. You're gonna hit it left, you're gonna hit it right, you're gonna to top it, you're gonna hit the ground. You're gonna sky your drivers. And you might even hit, dare I say it, a dreaded shank. Now in my opinion, hitting the ball straight right is a thousand times better than left. It's actually a great player's bad shot. I mean, we wouldn't even notice it was a bad shot. How many times have you seen 
you know, a tour player hit the, the right edge of the green or the right side of the fairway and they slam the club head into the ground. Now, it's a good, bad one. And generally the distance control doesn't drop off too much. It's consistent because the club head stays with the ball as you're attacking the ball from inside to out. So the consistency is there. Now, unless it's really aggressively swinging from in to out, then it, it doesn't overly block the body either. Unless you're doing this kind of thing, you know, slightly from inside to out, or even, even quite aggressively from inside to out, doesn't generally block the body anywhere near as much as this. And swinging to the right, attacking the ball from inside to out, then generally this dispersion won't be that big of a problem. Yeah, you might hit it straight right, you might hit some push fades, you might hit some draws, and if it's aggressive, you might hit a big snap hook, which is generally caused by wrist angles and a grip problem. You see, I told you the fog had lift. <laughs> so let's get those feet together. Now hitting shots with your feet together is something you just can't overdo. It's nothing new. I mean, tour players have been doing it for generations. I mean, Hale Irwin, the American guy, he's won majors and everything, and he used to swear by it. And the likes of Nick Faldo, you know, his caddy, I think her name was Fanny, used to grab his legs from behind and he'd hit shots to keep his lower body nice and quiet. It's all over the internet. So putting your feet together just quietens everything down. So you can concentrate on the correct swing direction and program your body with the correct movements. All right, so let's crack on, let's hit some shots. Now the control is there to guide you. Okay, it's there to help you. Not every good player, they either have a coach or a caddy with them, or they have a control or a system in place. So this is your coach, this is your caddy, this is your control, it's there to help you. So the first thing I want you to do is to put your feet together. Now, a point to remember now is the club face is always aiming at the target, okay? Even though we want to hit the ball straight to the right side, it's really, really important that the club face is aiming at the target. Okay, so then you take your grip. Now, the first point is we want to be swinging back over the tee, which is positioned in the ground here, 15 centimeters behind the ball, half a ball width inside, just to make sure that the club head is going back on the correct line here. Now, as I continue into the backswing, the club head should hit the center of gravity point, okay, here, which is a position from, uh, position from my base of my neck through the, to the balls of my feet, okay, so that's a, the half backswing position here. Now, as I swing down, I wanna follow the guide club, which is pointing over to the right side, and swing between the baskets. Now, these baskets are there to control me, okay? They're there to help me. So I want to avoid the baskets and swing between them. Okay, so let's give it a go. There we go, it's a good one, straight to the right. Let's hit another one. So you wanna try and do this from feeling, from instinct. Try and let it flow, okay? Don't think too much about it. There we go, two good shots.